Is that good? So, welcome to the 47th Annual National Convention of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, all you beautiful, godless heathens. We always begin with Dan singing and playing the historic 16th century free thought anthem, Die Gesanken sind frei, which means, my thoughts are free. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts freely flower. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them, no hunter can trap them, no person can deny, die Gedanken sind frei. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to duke or dictator. No person can deny, die Gedanken sind frei. And should tyrants take me and throw me in prison, my thoughts will burst free like blossoms in season. Foundations will crumble and structures will tumble and free people shall cry, die Gedanken sind frei and free people shall cry, die Gedanken sind frei. Where are you from? I'm in, I'm in Tampa. Florida. Now before we give our highlights of the 2024 year to date, please give a warm welcome to FFRF events manager, Sadie Pattinson. Mm -hmm. As Dan said, I am the events manager for FFRF, and I am very excited to welcome you all to Denver. I too have been eagerly waiting for the convention while planning it. Though I do the planning for the convention, it would not be made possible without the help from our FFRF staff members, especially the administrative team, as well as our lovely and very popular captioner, Norma, our audiovisual staff, our other volunteers as well. I'm grateful to say that I truly admire each and every staff member that I work with, and I'm very lucky to have each and every one of them. Working at FFRF is like getting paired in a group project in class and being realizing that you are with the coolest and most intelligent people in the classroom. <laughs> One of the best parts of the convention is that it brings all of our staff together. It also brings our members together from all across the country. I'm curious to see how many different states are represented here today with a state roll call. As I read the list of 50 states, please feel free to hoot, to holler, and to make some noise for your home state. May the loudest state win. In alpha order, starting with Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, <laughs> Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, <laughs> Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, 
Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, <laughs> Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Great. Did I forget anyone? No. Columbia? District of Columbia. There we go. Thank you, everyone. I think that Colorado may have had a little bit of an unfair advantage, but we'll give them the win since we're on their home turf. As the outreach manager, I also have the privilege of being the liaison of FFRF's nationwide chapters, one of which is right here in Denver. It is headed by the lovely Claudette St. Pierre. Claudette St. Pierre has been a pediatric nurse for over 36 years, and in 2013, she somehow also found the time to head the Metro Denver chapter of FFRF. Please give a warm welcome to the Denver chapter president, Claudette St. Pierre. Wow. What a fantastic turnout. It is so exciting to be the host city for the FFRF convention. Finally, after all these years that we've been advocating for it, the Mile High City, 5280, microbreweries and distilleries, Bluebird Ski Days in Vail, Breckenridge, or any of the great ski resorts. Hiking 14ers, Tiva Sandals, Rocky Mountain High, and not just from the altitude. <laughs> Spring and summer thunderstorms at 4 p.m. Broncos, Nuggets, Avalanche, Rockies, Colorado Rapids, we've got all the sports teams. Camping and hiking the Colorado Trail, mountain biking, gravel rides, and road bike riding concerts at Red Rocks Amphitheater, the Brown Palace Hotel, Columbine, Columbine Flowers, Rocky Mountain National Park, Estes Park, and the Stanley Hotel, Union Station, 300 plus days of sunshine, Palisade Peaches, the infamous Casa Bonita, quaking aspens and their glorious colors of yellow and green. These are all iconic symbols of Denver and Colorado. On behalf of the FFRF Denver Metro chapter, I welcome you to our great city and state. I hope you have the opportunity to see and enjoy some of these fabulous sites while you are here. There's another fabulous site though, really close to the hotel within walking distance. It's a billboard that our chapter actually helped to fund and host. If you get the opportunity to see it, it's on West Colfax Avenue. And again, it's walking distance. You just go south on Court Street and it's um, just to your right and you'll see it. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see one of the many billboards that we've put up. Thank you so much for being here and a warm welcome again. Well, it's great to see so many people's faces in person after knowing you've been members. Our membership is very large right now. We never imagined years ago. Here is FFRF's growth since 1987 when we had 
a whopping 1,800 members. Today, we are 40,000. Well, question. Actually, this month we are three shy of 40,000. So, could some of you, three of you, find an extra member to bring us up to 40,000? Our goal is to be at 50,000. Here's a close up of the last 10 years. Since 2014, we have almost doubled. So this is a photograph of our staff in front of the world's only and first atheist digi digital marquee. At our office in Madison. Most of our staff are here working or speaking at the conference so you can meet them. And we want to show what this marquee says. Gaylor's Godless Gang. And that's what religious right commentator Todd Starnes called FFRF. His exact words were, Gaylor's godless gang of thugs. <laughs> but there's more. Our favorite description, also by Todd Starnes, professional pains in the ass since 1978. We also... We also want to introduce and thank our executive board members who oversee FFRF. They're here. And we want to honor the memory and legacy of our dis of distinguished philosopher and atheist Daniel C. Dennett, who was one of our honorary directors. And now for a commercial break, please look for our clean money volunteers, board member Todd Pisick and Eric Lawrence. This is your chance to win clean, pre-in God We Trust currency with a grand prize of $100. And please visit the book and sales tables. You're going to meet our staff there during the breaks. We have almost everything at a special convention discount, and we want to call your attention to good deals on used books that way. And this gorgeous hand-sewn quilt is our featured silent auction, made and donated by one of our members. So take a look and make a bid. It's over there. FFRF belongs to the Thomas Paine Memorial Association, which helped get Congress to approve a monument to our forgotten founder in Washington, D.C. But we still have a lot of work to make it happen. This is sculptor Zenos Fridakis with an early draft of the Paine statue. This is one of the ways we visualize it. This is Zenis' photoshopped depiction of one possible location in D.C. And can you see tiny little Annie Laurie down there next to it? <laughs> it's just two blocks from the Capitol. You can find out more about how you can help with this project from Margaret Downey at the Thomas Paine Memorial Association table here at She's the She's over there. FFRF invests in the future of free thought. Typically, we grant about $125,000 annually to young freethinkers in the form of scholarships. We work with several groups to help fund the Lorraine Hansberry scholarships for high school seniors. This year, FFRF awarded a total of $35,000 to seven students in our Forward Free Thought Tuition Relief Scholarship in cooperation with Black Skeptics Los Angeles, entirely underwritten by one member, almost entirely, Lance Bredvold. Lance, are you here and can you please stand? There he is. And FFRF this year gave $19,850 in scholarships to the William Schultz Memorial Contest for college bound high school seniors with 12 top winners and 14 honorable mentions. FFRF gave 19,600 in scholarships to a total of 12 top winners and seven honorable mentions in our ongoing college uh, competition for, for college students, our 2024 Kenneth Pooh Memorial Contest. The top winners are pictured there. And although we don't have photographs of our top winners, we have given for our grad contest $16,450 this year. To encourage a minority within a minority, FFRF also sponsors an essay competition dedicated to black, indigenous students of color, the David Hudak Memorial Contest. And this year, FFRF gave over $18,000 to 11 top winners and seven honorable mentions. And these five contests have prizes ranging from the top 3,500 first place 
to $200 honorable mentions, and you're going to meet three of our essay contest winners tomorrow. Additionally, these are the winners of our annual law school competition, funded by the late Diane and Stephen Uhl. FFRF gave $9,000, divided among three winners. So now we want to briefly tell you something about the results of our 2024 membership survey, all about you. We do this four years in a row. We published some of the results in the September issue of Free Thought Today, and more than 11,000 of our 40,000 members participated, which is phenomenal. This chart shows that 65% of you describe yourself as atheist, and the rest are agnostic, humanist, freethinker, etc. Our membership remains older, with 68% retired or semi-retired, and our average age is, and I'm not making this up, 66.6. <laughs> Could it be Satan? <laughs> and this chart shows your experiences as a non-religious person. An impressive 88% of you have complained about a state church entanglement, thank you. Three quarters speak out freely about your lack of religion. However, a third of you still feel like you're the only non-religious person in your area and you've experienced prejudice as a non-believer and we're working to change that. Our members are highly educated. 68% have at least a four-year college degree compared to the national average of 38%. 27% have a master's or more, and 9% have PhDs. And more than 98% of you are registered voters. Hooray. More than 95% of you taking this survey in early summer said you would vote for Joe Biden. 0.5% of you chose Donald Trump. <laughs> Please note, FFRF cannot take a position on elections, but we can ask you for your thoughts. A whopping 98% of you, and your thoughts are wonderful. We have the secular values here, and our voice needs to be heard in elections. A whopping 98% of you support abortion rights, and 96% support marriage equality compared to 69% of general Americans. And as your top three concerns, you selected reproductive rights, civil rights slash racial equality, and women's rights, closely followed by the environment. And we have some new results for you that haven't been published yet. FFRF also commissioned a survey of about 2,500 nuns, N-O-N-E-S, People who have no religious affiliation, although most of them don't identify as atheist or agnostic, so we wanted to see how they compare to our members. We asked them the same questions we asked you. This chart asks why you left religion, letting people choose all that apply, and it discloses that the Reds, and these are the FFRFers, generally are much more critical of religion, are leaving religion in much greater numbers than the nuns because of science, because religion doesn't make sense, harm caused, and religious hypocrisy. FFRF members, again, they're the red bars, are much more politically engaged than the nuns in general. 75% of us, compared to 19% of the nuns, donate money to candidates. Thank you. We are almost three times more likely to contact our representatives, and you'll be reading more about this study on our website and in future issues of Free Thought Today. We'll be using this research to convert more nuns into activists and FFRFers. And final results, we're very pleased that our sh survey showed that 63% of you are very satisfied with your FFRF membership, that's the blue, and 36% are satisfied. So that's a 99% satisfaction rate. FFRF does a lot of educational outreach. Since the last convention, we've done a lot of international travel, starting with my debate at Oxford University, with the Freethinkers in Uruguay, at the Critical Thinking Conference in Argentina, co-sponsored by FFRF, meeting with the skeptics in Santiago, Chile. Annie Laurie and I were at the Spring of Reason and Exuberance Conference in Helsinki, and FFRF co-sponsored the International Celebrate Dissent Conference featuring ex-Muslims in Oslo. 
I'll be going to Nigeria next month with black non-believers president Mandisa Thomas for a performance of Godless Gospel. FFRF is co-sponsoring the third Latin American Free Thought Conference in November where FFRF board member David Tamayo and Hypatia Alexandria, who are here, will be speaking. And Annie Laurie will be debating women and religion in Cambridge in November. Our legal and legislative teams will tell you more about their appearances later today. So free thought is global. Our legal staff and legal director, Patrick Elliott, will give you the formal legal report this afternoon. But here's a sneak preview. This is Some you. of those concerns have led to a, uh, a lawsuit, right? That's, that's right. There's been a coalition of groups that have kind of come forward, led by the ACLU and the Freedom From Religion Foundation. But a complaint from the Freedom From Religion Foundation led to the nativity scene removal to the dismay of the locals. The Freedom From Religion Foundation sent a letter to the city of Toledo saying that we write to request that the city move this nativity display from public property out of respect for the First Amendment and the diversity of the Toledo community. Last week, the Freedom From Religion Foundation sent a letter to city officials requesting the nativity scene be removed. A nonprofit called Freedom From Religion Foundation sending a letter to Battle Creek Middle School there in Spring Hill. Over the past seven months, Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Religion Foundation says they have sent three letters to Rusk ISD telling the district that their student led prayers before football games are unconstitutional and must stop. And today we learned several advocacy groups are also considering a legal challenge. It appears that Ryan Walters wants to blatantly violate the U.S. Constitution and the Oklahoma Constitution. You know, he wants to violate his oath of office to push his religious beliefs on not only families and students, but also on educators. Now, the Freedom From Religion Foundation opened a three page letter to the mayor by declaring it unconstitutional. On August 1st, attorney for the Freedom From Religion, Hirsch M. Joshi, wrote a letter on behalf of the foundation to the district after learning of the in service turn worship experience. You'll be hearing more. And we want to we want to thank Bruce for putting that together for us. Thanks, Bruce. You probably know that FFRF is part of the coalition suing the state of Louisiana for passing a law requiring Ten Commandments posters in every public school classroom. In in this cartoon by Steve Benson, Moses is looking at the Ten Commandments, which says. Thou shalt not place these on public property. We face serious threats, and we're so grateful for your support for our legal work. And here's another cartoon by Steve. This appeared in a full-page ad of ours in the New York Times soon after the Alabama Chief Justice invoked God 41 times in banning IVF and saying embryos in test tubes are legal children. The ad warns, Zealots aren't limiting their crusade to banning abortion and Miffy Prestone. Contraception and same-sex marriage are next on the chopping block. Individual rights are very democracy, will not be safe until religion is kept in its place out of our laws. The ad says it's time to wake up to the growing threat of Christian nationalism. Laws must be based on our secular constitution and not on the wrath of God. Judy Saint, who directs our Sacramento chapter and is here today somewhere, Judy is here, right in the middle. She initiated a voter campaign and raised $32,000 from all the chapters to place billboards in the swing states which say, be a voter, save democracy. Some of them are already up, shown here in Pittsburgh and in Madison. And we put up a bonus billboard in Orlando, even though Florida is not a swing state, it's very important. And that Central Florida Free Thought Society chapter leaders, David and Jocelyn Williamson, and David is here today. And this is one of two Be a Voter billboards up in Phoenix, and that's some of our Valley of the Sun chapter members. Billboards will be up in... Bill Bowles will be up in the remaining states of North Carolina, Georgia, Nevada, and South Carolina by next week. Thanks so much to our dedicated chapters for this and everything else you do. So the takeaway is vote like your rights depend on it because they do. 
Our new public relations marketing director, Sarah Tetzloff, who's here today, is overseeing a multimedia voter awareness campaign in October. And we've been sounding the alarm for a year now against Project 2025's autocratic, theocratic playbook. You all know about that. Our slogan says, keep freedom alive, stop Project 2025. So we put a billboard with that message up near the site of the DNC in August in Chicago. And as Claudette told you, we have a message with the same, a billboard with the same message a few blocks from this hotel. I hope you'll be able to find it. We sent you the address in your packet. FFRF Action Fund, FFRF's advocacy le legislative lobbying arm, placed this billboard saying, your body belongs to you, not the church, not the state in Orlando to support Amendment 4, which will enshrine abortion rights in their state constitution and repeal the state's ban. That's <laughs> that's FFRF Action Fund board member Jocelyn Williamson in the matching t-shirt. I'm proud to announce that our new action fund has given a total of $55,000 divided among 10 state abortion referenda groups to support their work all over the country. If you live in a state with a referendum, you'll be hearing a reminder to vote for it soon. We ran a new ad warning about Christian nationalism on MS oh. MSNBC the week of the presidential debate between Trump and Biden in June, including before, during, and after the debate on the MSNBC broadcast. Let's watch that ad. Christian nationalists are mobilizing. They want to turn America into a Christian theocracy. Our secular democracy is in danger. All personal liberties are in jeopardy. Vote like your rights depend on it. And join the Freedom From Religion Foundation an association of atheists and agnostics working to keep religion and government separate. And you probably recognize that voice. We continue to produce our weekly Ask an Atheist show, airing our YouTube and Facebook uh, program. And Bruce, can you play this quick look at all the programming utilizing our talented staff? on FFRF's TV show, Free Thought Matters, which airs in six major cities on Saturdays and can be found on FFRF's YouTube channel. Why are we even having a debate? Why are, we, why are we even discussing? Why does the existence of God need arguments? It seems like God is doing a great job of hiding himself, doesn't it? And if he's doing that, then why are you going to so much trouble to smoke him out of his hiding place?
These absences that I mentioned make it highly unlikely that this God is a real being, that it's something outside of my own mind, and much more likely that he is a delusion. <laughs> And we have a radio show. Many of you listen to it. We started it in 2006. Free Thought Radio is a weekly show. We're now in our 19th year with more than 960 shows to date, including uh, almost 2 million downloads since the show began. And you're going to be hearing more from our legal team about the podcast, We Dissent. There's Bruce Johnson on the left and Buzz Kemper on the right. Bruce is actually projecting this presentation and directing the camera work here at the convention. And Buzz is, and his audio for the arts crew are here ably taking care of the sound. Also we have here FFRF IT director Scott Nickelbein and IT assistant Cheryl Lindmeyer. So we're, decided, we're excited tonight that we are going to end with a new speech by Ron Reagan who so generously recorded and then refreshed his iconic ad for the Freedom from Religion Foundation that has been much censored but much viewed, including on multiple national TV shows. And we never get tired of hearing this ad, so let's play it again, Bruce. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. And you'll meet Ron later tonight. Freedom depends on free thinkers. FFRF motto has never been truer. And those free thinkers are you. If those of us who are personally free from religion will vote in proportion to our numbers in the population, separation of state and church, our godless constitution and reason will prevail. We don't have to tell you to vote, but we know you're trying to do your bit to help get out the vote any way you can, because all of our rights depend on it. And thank you for being a member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation and for being here today.